your challenge, give it to God, and be like the psalmist who says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen, church? Amen. 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 Good morning. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Devon D. the Ayokonet and the executive leadership of this church, this Boulevard Baptist Church, it is always a pleasure to welcome you to this Lord's Sanctuary. To all our members, all our visitors and friends, we are very pleased to have you among us. Whether you have tuned in on 93.5 FM or you have joined us virtually on YouTube or Facebook, we are thankful that you have chosen to be with us. Today we warmly welcome all our first time visitors. We extend to you a hand of fellowship and to let you know that if you are interested to become a member of this church, please contact us and we will offer you all the requisite assistance. Now we invite anyone watching or listening who might be feeling, you know, a little tired, downtrodden, overwhelmed, anxious, and you really need someone to talk with. Here at Boulevard, we offer counseling services and prayer from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. on Sundays. Call us on the following lines, 905-876-905-0118-876-925-5329-876-925-2422-876-631-8283. And on Mondays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., we have a counseling session. That number is 876-224-4080. Prepare your hearts now as we await the blessings from this service. We remain standing for the call to worship. Come and worship. Be still and aware of God's presence within and around us. Come and worship. Be still and aware of Jesus' presence within and around us. Come and worship. Be still and aware of the Spirit's presence within and around us. Be still and know the presence of the triune God, the Father to whom we have come, the Son through whom we have come, the Spirit by whom we have come. Hear his word, be still and know that I am God. We sit for prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, your awesomeness continues to baffle us and blow our minds. As we glimpse your beauty in the setting sun, the mist on the mountain top, and eagle's wings, we sense your power in thunder clash, lightning flash, and ocean's roar. Precious Jesus, we see your love stretched out upon a cruel cross. We stand in awe at your sacrifice. Pure love, Lord, poured out for humankind. Holy Spirit, we see your power, Lord, in lives transformed and hearts on fire. We listen for your still small voice, comforting, guiding, calling. Oh, how we praise you, God. From the moment we wake 
to face the day ahead you are with us, Father. Through good times and bad times, your presence and wisdom are enough, God, for our needs. And so we thank you, God, and we praise you. We glorify you and we honor you. Hallelujah. We are so thankful to you for all that we have and for all that we are in and through you, Lord God. Your love for humankind present in the beginning of all things extends throughout history and touches our lives because, Lord, your love sees our failings and forgives. Your love, Lord, feels our pain and wipes away our tears. Your love knows grief and comfort the sorrowful. It is this love, Lord, that sees our sin and wretchedness and still loves us, the sinner. Forgive us, Father, when we fail to live lives that reflect your love. Forgive us for the many times when we take for granted all that you have done for us. Transform us through your spirit. Empower and embolden us to serve you through the many acts of service displayed by the gifts and talents to which you have blessed us with this day and throughout all day. Father, we place before you this morning every aspect of this worship service dedicated to you. Our manservant, Reverend Dick, the musician, the cantors. Lord, we place this service in your care. So take control of this service of worship, Lord, and continue to bless your people and God's people everywhere says, Amen. The Lord's Prayer.
glorify God through the singing of the hymn of praise. Glory be to God the Father. Please stand as we sing.
with trials of famine and darkness and sword. Still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare the way of the Lord. Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, if your voice is a year of jubilee, and out of Zion still salvation calls. These are the days of his eagle, the tribe won't be coming. Clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet call. If your voice is a year of jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the cloud, shining like the sun at the trumpet it's a year of jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. There is no God. There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God. There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. There's 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 no God like Jehovah. Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, the shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. None like Him. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. And out of Zion. For the reading of the scriptures and at this moment 
we continue to worship our God through the reading of the scriptures from the gospel. Luke chapter 6, verses 17 to 26, Mark 13, 10, sorry, verses 13 to 16. The first one will be read by Deacon Werner Edwards, and then we'll have Sister Carlene Peter Cooper from the October Fellowship. I'm going to invite us to stand for the gospel acclamation as we prepare our hearts to read God's word. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ. Morning. Coming down off the mountain with them, he stood on a plain surrounded by disciples and was soon joined by a huge congregation from all over Judea and Jerusalem, even from the seaside town of Tyre and Sidon. They had come both to hear him and to be cured of their ailments. Those disturbed by evil spirits were healed. Everyone was trying to touch him. So much energy surging from him, so many people healed. Then he spoke. You are blessed when you lost it all. God's kingdom is there for the finding. You are blessed when you raven ravenously hunger. Then you are ready for the mess messianic meal. You are blessed when the tears flow freely. Joy comes with the morning. Count yourself blessed every time someone cuts you down or throws you out. Every time someone smears or blackens your name to discredit you. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and that person is uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Skip like a lamb if you like it. For even though they don't like it, I do all, I do, and all heaven applauds. I know that you are in good company. My preachers and witnesses have always been treated like this. But if trouble ahead, if you think you have made it, what you have is all you have ever get. And if trouble ahead, if you are satisfied with yourself, yourself will not satisfy you for long. And if trouble ahead, if you think life's all fun and games, there's suffering to be met, and you are going to meet it. There's trouble ahead when you live only for the approval of others, saying what flatters them, doing what indulges them. Popularity contests are not truth contests. Look how many scoundrel preachers were approved by your ancestors. Your task is to be true, not popular. To you who are ready for truth, I say this. Love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer for that person. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We'll now hear the other re gospel reading from Sister Peter Cooper. morning church the reading taken from mark chapter 10 verses 13 to 16 people were bringing little children to jesus to have him touch them but the disciples rebuked them when jesus saw this he was indignant he said to them 
Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. worship. We'll be favored with a selection which our brother Joe will come forward to speak to. As he comes, let us prepare our hearts after this selection to hear the word of God based on the constitution of the kingdom of God proclaimed by our man servant, Reverend Dr. Devon Gick. My brothers and sisters, the COVID-19 virus has unleashed upon us a number of pathologies, restriction, separation, and you name it. But it has also broadened and opened for us opportunities, opportunities to bring the gathered and scattered church together through the portals of technology. Today's presentation is actually one such virtual production of voices from across the world. You would recall in 2017, we had a guest conductor from Mesa, Arizona, a North Korean by birth, Jun Sui. Jun has decided to partner with us to provide voice parts and instrument parts, and we will build out on it to make a virtual choir production. Now, the thinking when she suggested that was she would send the music track, we would do a voice over here and send it back to her because Boulevard, I don't think we have the resources to put a virtual choir together. Big old America should do that. Interestingly, she was thinking the same thing, that Jamaica should do this. So this week, the voice parts were sent. She did soprano one, two, and alto. And I did tenor and bass in our studio upstairs. I want to give kudos this morning to whom I'll call, if I'm permitted to, give him such a title, my technical producer, Stefan Allen, who labored with me over two days to put this virtual production together. I would be very proud to say that we have great possibilities coming out of this studio, as well as we have now been called to embrace technology in a new way that will bring voices from across the world together as we make music. Stay tuned, be blessed, and I'm sure you will too, at some point, engage the studios of the Boulevard Baptist Church. The song is titled, I Will Serve the Lord All My Days.
I want to thank the quartet for that ministry. I know some of you don't understand music so well. When I say quartet, it means that Joseph did two parts and Jung did two parts. So you see, I'm very knowledgeable about music these days. Eh? God is good all the time. God is a good God. And we thank our deacons last song and Verna for leading us in worship. You know, friends, I, I got up before five o'clock this morning you know, preparing for this worship service, putting fine tuning. But, and I, I have to stop this now. I started to listen to the Care FM 93.5 the music was so good, you know, you can, but I can't hear it any time today or tomorrow, so I'm not going to listen to it on a Sunday morning again when I have to come to worship service. But thanks, um, those Negro Spiritual, Joseph and his team, Delvin and his team put in together. God is good all the time. God indeed is Great. I'm just underscoring what Deacon Joe said about Stefan. Stefan just had two training sessions along with well, five other young persons. And you see what they, he did technically? The, the quartet, they were in th three different places, Jamaica, Arizona, two different places, and they brought everything together through that music steward. And we just give God thanks. Give God thanks. Let us pray. Continue to speak to us, Lord, and bless your word unto our hearts and glorify your name. Amen. Luke chapter 6, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you, and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. This is the word of the Lord. The constitution of the kingdom of God. We had unusual two gospel readings. One from Luke and one from Mark. So today we are going to have two texts. One from Luke chapter 6, verse 20, and one from Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. Luke stated, quoting Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And you recall the story very well. As was well read by Sister Cooper, said to do not hinder the children. Let them come unto me, for the kingdom of God is for such as these. We are looking at the constitution of the kingdom of God. What is the guiding philosophy? 
in the kingdom of God. What are the governing principles within the kingdom of God? How does one belong to the kingdom of God? How should we behave in the kingdom of God? And what are the benefits of belonging and to the kingdom of God, behaving in the kingdom of God? Brothers and sisters in Christ, we will be looking at the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, to explain the constitution of the kingdom of God. We'll be examining the Sermon on the Mount to get an understanding of the kingdom of God. And we'll also be examining the encounter Jesus had with the little children to explain the kingdom of God. Previously, because there is no definition of the kingdom of God, we look to parables. We look to parables found in Luke chapter 15, what Jürgen Moltmann, German theologian, called lost and found parables. The parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. And we said that if you want to understand the nature of the kingdom of God, we recognize that in that parable, God is the one who seeks after us. God is the one who searches after us. And God is the one who selects us to be part of the kingdom of God. It is his initiative. It is his invitation. And the Sunday before, in trying to explain the kingdom of God, we looked at the parable of the pearl, where the merchant seeking you know, out this precious stone, this gemstone, when he found that pearl, he sold everything and bought that pearl. Because that pearl was precious and priceless. It was a pretty pearl. And so we said, we said that the kingdom of God is like that pearl. Precious, priceless, pretty, rare. And so we got an understanding about the kingdom of God, and the value of the kingdom of God. Above everything else, we should risk all all resources and effort so that we are part of the kingdom of God. This morning, we are going to be looking at the Constitution by examining the Sermon on the Mount. We are going to explore the Constitution of the kingdom of God by examining the encounter Jesus had with these little children. And we are going to look and decide on how, how do you get enlisted into the kingdom of God? Who are the enrollees in the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom ethic? How do you behave? How do we, how do we, how ought we to behave? What is the correct behavior in the kingdom of God? And how are we to enjoy the kingdom of God? What are the benefits? The enrollees. Who are the ones, according to the Sermon on the Mount and the encounter with the little children, who are the ones who are enrolled in the kingdom of God? It is the desperately poor, the dependent pitney, who have their dignity restored. 
the poor, desperately poor. The little ones, little, what we call picnic, dependent, who have their dignity restored. Those are the ones who are enrolled in the kingdom of God. The desperately poor. These are persons who are hungry, homeless, unemployed, underemployed. They can't make two ends meet. They live from hand to mouth. Desperately poor. And when you look at the lost son parable again, you realize that the son was desperately poor. He had to get a robe. Obviously, he was naked. He had to get sandals. Obviously, he was barefoot. And he had to get food. Starving. Perhaps, you know, the reason why the father killed a fatted calf was that the son was so hungry he could eat a cow by himself. When you're hungry, you know, friends, you just yum the food. I went to a certain place, a certain African country many years ago, and we were at the hotel. And you saw the African persons there coming in. And you could tell that something was wrong in that country. How they were eating up the food. So when you're hungry and homeless, you don't have a certain etiquette in eating. And those are the persons for whom the kingdom of God belongs. And they are happy to be in the kingdom of God. These persons are humble. And by humble I mean that they are considered by others as non-humans. Some sharp and all the enslaved were considered as non-humans. They were not human beings. They were classified as property to be used and abused. You can sell the property, you can bargain it, and you can bequeath it. It's property. These persons, they have no rights, no human rights, no economic rights, no political rights, no civil rights. They were not even considered to have a soul. They were non-humans. Jesus is saying that these people are happy are those people, these desperately poor, because the kingdom of God belongs to them. When he was giving his mission statement in Luke chapter 4, he said, I came to proclaim the gospel to the poor. Good news to the poor. These people who are hungry, these people who are homeless, these people who are humble and considered non-human, when they hear the gospel, they're going to feel happy and they rejoice because they are now part of the family of God. And so old women who have said they don't have no use anymore, they pass their best by day, these people are part of the kingdom of God. And the children... The little children who talk too much, who play too much, who run up and down too much, who noisy, they are the ones. It's like these, these little ones. The kingdom of God belongs to them. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ. But you know what? We are like the disciples of old. When we see the desperately poor, we see them as a burden. When we see the dependent children, we see them as a bother. Read the story again. 
in Luke chapter 9. The feeding of the 5,000. What it says. Jesus was explaining to them about the kingdom of God. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. And they took them, but the crowds learned about and followed him. He welcomed them and he spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. Late in the afternoon, the twelve came to him and said, send, send the crowd away. They are a burden so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and find food and lodging because we are in a remote place. Send the crowd away. It would take half a year wages to feed the 5,000 hungry people. These are the poorest of the poor, you know. It's not even like the disciples. The disciples, they had skills. They had fisherman, carpenter, tent maker, business owner, tax collector, bookkeeper, skilled people, know how to mend nets so they can do the maths. And then them says 5,000 hungry people, send them away. What they say, what the disciples did when they see the children coming, children being brought for blessing. Send them away. Jesus had to say, no, don't hinder them, let them come. Let them see them as disturbance. Jesus busy, have important ministry to organize. Not recognizing that they are central to the ministry. It's not an outreach. It's not a little extra. It is core, the ministry. To those who are hungry and homeless, the humble people who are considered non-humans, the little children who we don't recognize. They must be seen and not heard. But these are they now for whom they have, the, the kingdom of God, they have been enlisted. They are enrolled in the kingdom of God. And these people have their dignity restored. It is not that these desperately poor persons are going to become materially rich. No. It is that their dignity has been restored. It's not that the little children are going to get forced ripe and become like adults. No. It's that their dignity has been restored. They have been made in the image of God. They have self-worth, self-esteem. New image of themselves. So they have status in the kingdom of God. They have standing in the kingdom of God. And they walk with swagger now. Because they're in the kingdom of God. They are king's kids. They are sons and daughters of God. They are part of the first family now. First children. They are princes and princesses. And they are now eating honey and drinking milk. Good for them structure and their immune system. They lack nothing. They have their dignity restored, their self-worth, their self-esteem. And though they are the poorest of the poor, they are happy because they are in the kingdom. They recognize their status and their standing. They have a swagger about them because they are children of the Most High God. Nobody is better than them. They are no worse than anybody. They are the children of God and they are happy. Blessed are the poor for theirs is the kingdom of God. They have been enlisted. And if you are in the kingdom of God, Next thing you have to learn is how to behave there. The kingdom ethic. What are the virtues? What is the value system in this kingdom? What are the moral principles that we have to observe? 
what is the correct behavior, what to do and what not to do. I want to say two things. We must be ascetic and we must be artistic. If we're going to be in the kingdom and we want to know how to behave ourselves, how to conduct ourselves, we have to be ascetic. Meaning you're living a simple life. Simplicity. Life not cluttered. Life not a life of hoarding. Just a simple life. What is a simple life? It is a life where we just have one focus. One main thing in life. And what is that? To seek ye first the kingdom of God. That is it. That's one thing. And we know that once we do that, all the other things then will follow. So we have the center is right and the circumference will follow. We just get the center right. We just get the focus right. And all the other things. So, whether we want to be involved in the fight against COVID and climate change and equal distribution of income, but the focus and the central thing is seeking first the kingdom and all of those things will be outworking of that. God will assign certain ministries to us. But it's, don't lose focus. It's one thing. Yeah, they tell you, you know, they say, I can only focus on one thing at a time. One dege dege thing. And it's a, it's, a, it's a statement to us. Focus. Central. Main. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, a simple life. But you know, what is taking over the world is a materialistic world. It is a material world. And in spite of the Kiwanis saying the importance of spiritual values over the material, too many people still don't understand that. It's they only believe in the things that they can see, touch, and taste as being important. So other values of love, of unity and strength, not so important. But the simple life is it. We don't become materialistic. And you know, friends, don't matter think it's only the world is materialistic. We're in after money, 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 money. It's in the church too. Too many. I, I saw what day last week. A man come on television and telling the people them, if you sow a seed of a thousand US, in nine months' time your business will prosper more than the previous nine years. Friends, it now go happen. So another one a couple of days ago, him cute now, you know, he said, No weapon form against you will prosper. And because it is in Isaiah chapter 54, he said, send 54 US dollars. And then, no weapon form against you. And he said that, when certain things, are, as soon as you send the money, God will authorize certain things to happen. Mr. Friends, if you send the $54,000, it now go happen. Not going to work. The next thing you're going to do, you're going to start to buy obia and buy lottery. If you think that is how to get financial prosperity. I remember when I was president of the Jamaica Baptist Union, I was going around the island talking about living the sacrificial life. A lovely lady, a Christian lady. And she said, when I said what I just said to you, she said, no, no, pastor. I did a, we call it seed money thing. You give money so that God will answer your prayer. So she said, she did it, and money come so that a child could go to study in Canada. But you know, friends, you know, what is it? You know, that, that don't happen, you know. What is it is that even if she never put in that money and call it seed money, God would still have provided for her daughter. God knows our needs before we ask. He answers our prayers before we ask. So don't make God into a material God. Like it's a golden calf we're building. So you, you just give God some money and no, 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 friend. If I got, were the whole realm of nature, man, it would be an offering far too small. 
Love so amazing. It is not that. It's not the little what we give in. Because God already give us all. So it's just a little portion we give back. Friends, talk, talk to me now. Talk to me now. If you can give a thousand US dollars and then you're going to get 10,000 from God afterward, might as well give a hundred thousand US dollars and then you get a million US dollars. You think so? So, so, so God, so licky, licky. It is a disgrace out what we, we're making God in our own image. Like God needs, you have to spur God with little money, you know? You have to bribe him, induce God, you know? Spur him on, encourage him. Come on, friends, don't bother with that. It is almost going on blasphemy if you start to do that to God. It's a material God we're trying to make out. That's not what we are called upon. That's not correct behavior. We must be ascetic. Simple lifestyle. Perhaps we need to look at somebody like uh, Father Richard Dolan, the brothers of the poor. Simple lifestyle, friends. Just get it simple. Don't clutter your life with too much things. The other thing I want to mention is that we must be artistic, not barbaric. By artistic, I mean that we are creative. We are in touch with our emotional side. We are in touch with God, worshiping God in truth and in spirit. We are in touch with nature and the environment, the feelings, the nurturing. You know, when they talk about artistic and artists, you know, that side of build it up. But nowadays what we are finding is that people too barbaric. You have no feeling. Dead. Numb. I don't know if you have been following this number one streaming film on Netflix. It is a Korean show called Squid Game. It is based on a kid's game. And then now they turn it into a, it's a gory game. That is to say, they, it's like a reality show. So they get what 400 are desperately poor. You know? That's what they like to get. There's poor people to enter the game. They are desperately poor, greatly indebted. And the one that survives, the winner will get about 30,000 US. A real money, big money. But you know what happens? It is a Dangerous and deadly. Few people can survive. Brutal. But it is the most popular film that Netflix has ever made. You see where the world gone, friends? You see me? I would never watch Squid Game on Netflix. I'll take a stand. Well, in any case, I don't even have Netflix. But if I did even have it, I wasn't going to watch Squid Game on it. Barbaric. But again, friends, this is the world, all the world going, but it's not only the world, the church. The church, friends. Barbaric. You, you read the report recently out of France. Anybody read it? 330,000 children, God's children, been Sexually abused. Sexually abused by approximately 3,000 Roman Catholic priests over 70 years. That is barbaric. When you do the calculation for every one priest, they molest about 100, sexually molest about 100, mainly boys. That's barbaric, friends. That's wicked. And the same church go to preach and say homosexuality, wrong and sin. And yet still, one priest on average molesting a hundred. So what is that then? They say one time is mistake. Two time is purpose. So a hundred times, what is that? That's barbaric. It's like they're sinning on steroids. Wickedness on steroids, friends. That God's children, these children who, for whom the kingdom of God was made, who are dependent. It's barbaric. 
that are, have, they have no part and parcel with God. It's kingdom. You know, so you behave in a God's kingdom. People, the children who are so dependent and trusting, they take away their innocence and they do it over 70 years, you know. It was a systemic, systematic cover-up for 70 years. No offense. If that's how the kingdom operates, how you're supposed to behave in the kingdom. That's not the kingdom ethic. Kingdom ethic is supposed to be ascetic, simple lifestyle, focus on Jesus, seek ye first the kingdom. It's artistic. You're, you're interested in the well-being and welfare of others. Yes. You're in communion with God, communicating with God, being one with God. Worshiping God in truth and in spirit. Elevating everybody. Yes, that is a kingdom ethic. Finally, how do we enjoy the kingdom of God? What are the benefits of the kingdom of God? We have said that those who are enlisted and enrolled in the kingdom of God are the desperately poor, the dependent pitney, who have their dignity restored and they have status and standing in the kingdom of God. We said that you must behave a certain way. You can't just behave in any way in the kingdom of God and think it's acceptable. Have a simple lifestyle. Have a lifestyle that is seeking first the kingdom of God and in communion with God with God's nature, with God's people, with God's word. We want to enjoy the benefits. Those who belong to the kingdom of God and those who are behaving in the kingdom of God will have certain benefits. And this is... I close with three benefits. Three things. We must have what I would want us to call a culture of caring. A culture of caring. What a beautiful story that of, of um, feeding up to 5,000. Whereas the disciples said, send them away, there was a little lad. John explains it more than the other gospel writers. I think it's John chapter 6. He was a little lad. He had what? Five barley loaves. Two fish. Two fish. And it's like sprat. Yeah. Ah, salt fish. Probably like a mackerel. Something like that. Ah, salt fish is big then. All right. Salt mackerel then. Eh? Pickle mackerel. Yeah, man. Poor people food. And he was willing to give up his, you know. No adult would have done that. We have to eat one fish first and eat two bread before we share. But he's a little poor boy. Five barley loaves. The barley loaves of poor people bread that, you know. It's only Deacon Myrtle's value would understand what I'm saying. When I was, you know, six, seven, eight, I used to go and spend time in the bath area with my grandmother, Aunt Adina. And she would send me to the bakery to buy steel bread. You know steel bread? Kind cheaper. You know, people, when the shop return the bread to the bakery, them sell the steel bread cheaper. It have on what we call junjo. And that is what my grandmother would eat, and I would eat it. My grandmother lived to her 90s. I am the only one in my family who will eat steel food. You know, when it kind of like a touch, because I used to it. My mother is the only one in the, our family too who, who would eat, the, eat those type of food. And she's 89. 
I think it helped build up your immune system. So I can, I can, I can eat it and my mother eat it. What do you call poor people food? So sometimes these things have little benefits. But country people caring and they share. Anybody that comes by. And not, in fact, I, even, I never know say I was poor. I never know say it's poor, poor business. I thought it was good, 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 good thing. The only time I remember I was poor it was one of my rich relatives come and said to me that I live in Shotback. You understand that? Where we live. Yeah, my father is quarter Chinese. You have the shop at the front, and we live at the back. One building. One building. So she said, with scan, you live at shop back. It's the first I was even hearing the term, shop back. Shop back. We were comfortable. The little lad with his five barley loaves and two fish it was all right, so I'm share it. So anybody who tell you, say, you need cash to cure, they never know about this little lad. This little lad, poor people can care too. Poor people can share and have compassion, share their limited resources, share what they have, share their time, share their knowledge. Poor pe people who are poor can care. And as you know, little is much when God is in it. Just give it to God. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ. What are the benefits of the kingdom? You don't even know, say so you're poor. And you're willing to share what you have out of your little. That's a benefit. You know, worry about nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I can live without certain things. I can exist without certain things. The only thing we can live without is Jesus. We have to have hope in God. Well, once you don't take that from me, just like Job, take everything. But once you have that relationship. And don't bother to knock Job too much and knock Job's wife too much, you know. Because he said, curse God and die. Imagine it, man. You have ten picnic. And all ten dead, one time? Come on, friends. That would have shake with fear. Bad, bad, bad. In fact, some of you all have two people, and then two of them dead now. Mm. Stop go church. Stop read Bible. Crisis of faith. Right? Yeah. So it takes something, friends, to trust God in everything. Those are the people of the kingdom of God. They are used to living on little. And they're satisfied and they're not bored. New status, new standing, and swagger in the kingdom of God. The last two little things I'll say quickly is that if you want to enjoy the kingdom of God, if you want to understand the benefits of the kingdom of God, you must accept criticism and be curious. You must recognize, we must recognize that we don't know everything. Constructive criticism has a place because you want to do better for the Lord and for the Lord's kingdom and the Lord's mission and ministry. Away with the ego. And that is why every time we come to the Lord's table, it says examine yourself. We have to examine ourselves. See our shortcomings. How we are falling short. So we have to have that. And the next thing is that we must be curious. We must want to learn something more. We must want to advance. I don't know if you read a story about Danique, five-year-old, live at Riversdale, drive in New Haven, stray bullet killer, five. Well, what did the mother say about her, that she wanted to be a scientist? And she had an inquisitive mind. It's a children's theater. They're curious. They want to learn. They want to understand. And if we are going to be in the kingdom of God, we must have that curiosity. We must want to get new ways of doing things, new revelation, new wisdom. We must believe in new norms. 
We don't know where the Spirit is going to lead, but we just want to be led by the Spirit. Wherever it leads us, we will follow. A new dimension, a new perspective, new wisdom. So we don't get frightened of the age. We don't get frightened by the new challenge and the new information. We're curious. Where is God leading in this time? And we want the ride. It's dynamic. We're enjoying it because we're not even sure where we're going, but we know who holds our hands. And we're going. You know, contrast Adam and Eve and the two disciples on the MS road. Both of them got knowledge. When Adam and Eve got knowledge, what happened? They used that knowledge to let them know that they lack clothes. Them start to see what they don't have naked, what they never have on. Now they start to have shame and embarrassment. So that is what the knowledge helped them. But look at the, a better way. The two on the MRS road, confused, overwhelmed, downcast and depressed. But Jesus came alongside them, walked with them, and their hearts were strangely warm. And in the breaking of bread, Jesus was revealed. They got another revelation, more wisdom. Oh, to God, when we have the Lord's Supper, we'll get another revelation from God. New knowledge, new wisdom. We say, Lord, where are you leading us now? We are ready for that. We are going to enjoy the ride. Sisters and brothers in Christ. Deacon Vicky put us on this part and wants to explain more the kingdom of God. We have to use the parables to explain the kingdom of God because there's no definition. We see that. We just look at the lost and found parables. But this one, we're looking at the constitution. As seen in the Sermon on the Mount and the encounter with the little children. And we have said, friends, that the kingdom of God is for them. Those people who are desperately poor, dependent people, who have their dignity restored, new status standing in the kingdom, God's kids. We have said that we must learn how to behave ourselves. What is the correct behavior? What is the value system? It has to be different. Not some of the things they want to see in some churches. Not some of the things they want to see outside. An ascetic, ascetic simple lifestyle. Mm. Artistic, emotive, emotional, in touch with God, the Spirit, not a material God, Spirit and in truth. And then we are going to enjoy the benefits by developing a culture of sharing, a culture of caring. Yes. Be like that little lad who gave all. Be like Sister Gloria McPherson called me earlier this week on Monday and said that, and she's a lady of mature age, that this brother is not well. I called him. He was at the pharmacist, just coming from the doctor. And she's of mature age. She's not a leader. She's not a deacon. But she has that culture of caring. For somebody else so she makes the call and she reports to me what is happening we have to develop that culture of caring and we must have that spirit of curiosity where we can we are open to new ways new knowledge new wisdom new revelation and we are going to do god's will in the kingdom of god may god help us to such an end amen I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. We have swagger, we have standing, we have status.
and brothers, are you glad to be a part of the family of God? Yes. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that we are a part of your family. We are part of the kingdom of God. You have invited us. You have enrolled us. And you have showed us the benefits of being in the kingdom. Oh God, forgive us when we have not behaved in a proper way. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Make us whole again. Reveal to us, Lord. Give us another revelation. Grant us to us new information, new ways in which we can serve you, worship you, minister in your name, and enlist others to be part of the kingdom of God. So that others on the second Sunday in December will join the fellowship whether through baptism, restoration, or transfer. Lord, remember those who are not well. Ver Verona went. She has been discharged from the hospital and is now, is now recuperating at home. Brother, our brother, daily. Remember those who are mourning the loss of loved one. Olga Hamilton, Kathleen Grant, Dorothy McCook, Florence Moody, family members of Dita Heath, and Veronica Beckford, Edna Allen, and our brother Leslie Smith. May, O oh God, they experience the comfort that comes only from you and the solace of saints. Lord, remember those who are fearful because of terminal illness diagnosis, breast cancer, or other cancers. Lord, you know, we desire and pray for healing. But ultimately, we believe that it's not our will, but your will be done. We pray, O oh God, as we fight against this coronavirus, this COVID-19 disease, that we will do what is necessary, not only for ourselves, but for others, and the welfare of our families, our communities, and country, and yea, the world. Into your hands, O God, we leave everyone, including my brother who seeks prayer from Tanzania. May you do for him and us more than we deserve and desire. For we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Come to this sacred table, not because you must, but because of me. Come not to testify of your righteousness, but that in your 
sin and frailty. We desire to be his true disciples. Christ, the Paschal Lamb, has been crucified. Let us celebrate the festival. According to the Holy Institution, command an example of our Lord Jesus the Christ, who in the same night which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And same manner also he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, you do it in remembrance of me. Then invite Deacon Verna to ask God's blessing on this sacrament. Let us all pray. Lord, we come to you giving thanks for the word that has been declared. And now, Lord, as you invite us to feast at your table, we thank you, O God, for the bread representing your broken body and the wine, the shed blood for remission of sins. Lord, may we, as we eat and drink, be strengthened and be cleansed from our sins. And Lord, as we want our desire to be your desire and our will to be your will, Lord, give us wisdom lest we perish. Bless us individually and bless us collectively as we feast at your table. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we are being served, we will sing, I come to the cross like a small boat. <laughs> I 
Come to the cross like a small boat sailing across the reef. And the calm of my Christ is waiting behind the waves of grief. Coming home, Jesus, coming home, not going to sail no more. Coming home, Lord, into heaven, sailing to the promised shore. Sailing to the promised shore, sailing to the promised shore, sailing to the promised shore. Please stand. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Take, eat. This is the body of Christ brought one to you. Take, eat, body of Christ unto eternal life. Eat all and be thankful. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you. And be thankful. Please be seated. Let us pray for the church, universal. Almighty God, Father of all families, head of the church, wherever church is gathered in Jamaica, Arizona, mm -hmm. South Korea, Tanzania, or wherever, we adore you, we worship you, we magnify your name. Hasten the coming of your kingdom, Lord, lest we perish. See so much evil, wickedness, barbaric behavior. O oh God, strengthen us in this hour. Almighty God, we thank you for all those who have served you faithfully and have now departed. Edna Allen, Dita Heath, Veronica Beckford, Lesda Smith, keep our hearts together through your love. And may their legacy inspire us to deeper depth and higher heights in you. Oh God, we thank you for revealing yourself again through the breaking of bread that our hearts were strangely warmed and blessed. Prepare us for what we have to face as we go to our respective homes, communities, companies, as we have to deal with the challenges of the age. May the knowledge of your kingdom grant unto us hope now 
and forevermore. This we pray and ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every time we come to the Lord's table, we are blessed. We benefit from the death and resurrection of Jesus. Let us go forth with that single focus to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in the full knowledge that we are enlisted and enrolled in the kingdom of God. We have self-worth, self-esteem. We have status and standing in the kingdom. Let that assurance keep us true. And we are going to ask our sister Molly to mention a few things concerning opportunities to worship God and engage in God's ministry. And then we'll take up the offering both together. Tear basket and an offering. As usual, retain your bulletins. We continue to highlight the special days of our members born in the month of October. Today, the 10th, we have a special celebrant, Tamara Bryson. Tamara, wherever you are, have a very good birthday. From Monday the 11th to Saturday the 16th, we have Elsie Renford, Robert Panton, Sherinet Jacobs, Lucille Brown, Dominic Simpson, Maria Hopkins, Carol Bernard Madden, Robert Henderson, Leighton Barnett, and Sidna Peterkin. May the Lord bless you all. Tithes and offering as usual, you know to continue to lodge your tithes and offering. You have the account online at NCB Concern Spring, 331-111-031. If you have difficulty getting it to church, call the church office. On a congratulatory note, we'd like to congratulate Dr. Mark Nicely, who has been elected as the Secretary General of the Jamaica Teachers Association. Dr. Nicely is the son of Sister Jenny Connor of March Fellowship. Let's give them a round of applause. Yes. <laughs> Tribute and prayer service on Wednesday, October 13, 630. The late Sister Edna Allen of January Fellowship and the late Brother Leslie Smith of May Fellowship. We have it via Zoom. Check your bulletin for your password, passcode and your meeting ID. We also have the George Lila Lecture, Sunday here, the 10th, 6 p.m. The topic free, village movement. Again, consult your bulletin for all information via Zoom and YouTube. BBC is on the air in 93.5 FM CARE. And you know we have several serv um, programs, so we call them last week. Let me just give you a few. Talking Health and Wellness, Kids Bible Talk. But today at 10.45, tune in when Generation Z chat space. The discussion is about cancer, but not canceled. Real survivor story with the host Marissa Bailey as she speaks with Loana Harrison and Renee Evans Grant. We have Women's Federation Enrollment Service 2021, October 31st, commencing at 4.30 p.m. Consult your bulletin for other information. We have four funeral services, which all will be held here at Boulevard for um, the late sister Edna Allen. That one will be kept Friday, October the 15th, 10.30. For sister Dita Heath of May Fellowship, Wednesday, October 27th. Funeral service for the late sister Veronica Beckford, Thursday, October 28th at 9.30. Funeral service for the late brother Leslie Smith, May Fellowship, Friday, October 29th. All services, I told you, will be right here at Boulevard. And as I close, and in spite of all the challenges that we are experiencing in this pandemic, remember to always find something to be grateful for. Tell yourself, I may not be where I want to be, 
but thank God I am not where I used to be. Stay blessed and have a wonderful week. Thank you very much, Sister Molly. We invite you to stand for the blessing of the offering. Laura Milton will collect for the care basket, and the ladies, Marlene and Sister Cooper, will collect the tithes and offering. Proverbs 3, verses 9 to 10 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will be bursting with wine. God again and again in scripture calls upon his people to honor him with the first fruits of all your finances and all we earn. We are to give to him and the work of his church to extend God's kingdom here on earth. Let us pray. Lord, we count it a privilege to give. And so, Lord, as you have blessed us, we give you thanks. And now, Lord, we, man said, Whoa. we honor you with giving unto you our tithes and offerings. Lord, we pray a blessing upon them. And we pray, Lord, that it will be used to extend your kingdom here on earth so that others may hear your good works and come to honor you with their lives. So, Lord, bless us now individually and collectively as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as the offering is being collected and the benediction is being pronounced. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you his peace. Jesus' name, morning.